Hello friends, and welcome back to my floor. That's a fun new background, and by new, I mean I just brought it in here from my living room because my new roommate hates it. I'm also wearing this shirt that says oregano, the spice of life that someone sent to my P.O. box, and presumably printed for the purpose of sending to my P.O. box, and I appreciate that deeply. When your subscribers are faster at making your merch than you are, okay, let's just jump into it. I get comments all the time about my Tales from Catholic School videos. I get so many requests to do new ones. It's just something that resonates with a lot of people because it's, in a way, like I feel like my Catholic school was just uniquely terrible a lot of the time, and there were things about it that were very, very unique, but at the same time, growing up being gay or even just in general growing up in Catholic school is just such a, it's just such a time. And people send me their own stories about crazy shit that happened to them in Catholic school all the time. So I thought for this video, I, I put out an Instagram story asking like, send me your best Catholic school stories. I wanna do like a compilation of subscriber submitted stories just so that all of us who grew up in Catholic school can have a moment of bonding together, you know? I received so many messages. I will definitely not be able to get through all of them in this video. I haven't read too many of them, actually. I've, I've skimmed my DM requests a little bit, but I would say most of these are still a mystery to me. So this is just gonna be my genuine having a time going through all of your stories, and we can have this fantastic experience together. Hey there, I have a lot of weird Catholic school stories, but here is one. We had this class called Seminar, and so it was pretty much religion class. We sat in hippie circles and talked about our feelings. One day, Mrs. Passive Aggressive, that's what we call her, took us outside and made us do Jesus yoga. Oh my god, this is exactly something that would have happened in my school. But at school dances, they would always yell out, keep Jesus between you. Ours was keep room for the Holy Spirit or leave room for the Holy Spirit or something they used to say to us. So keep Jesus between you. You gotta have, when you're slow dancing with your arms straight out on a boy's shoulders like this in middle school, you have to have enough room between you for an adult male <laughs> Jesus to fit between you. <laughs> Because that's way less creepy than kids dancing with already like a foot of space between them. We would pray at the beginning of every religion class and me and my two friends didn't participate and our teacher yelled at us for not praying. She brought the vice principal in to yell at us and we said we were non-religious or a different religion, which is true. To which she told us we had to pray because it wasn't our choice and we couldn't choose uh, because everyone else had to pray. A different part of the year was that she told all the girls that once we were married, our husbands own our bodies. She also said that we must have as many children as our husbands want, and if we don't have kids, we would go to hell. <sighs> oh boy, this is interesting. Because now I'm wondering what would have happened at my school if anyone had ever refused to pray or refused to participate religiously, because that never happened at my school. Even those of us who didn't kind of just went along with it. We had a priest speak at our graduation who told us that our purpose was basically to go make Catholic babies. So I get that last one. That was, that was definitely a thing. Also the reason I left was because my principal wouldn't do anything about bullying and told me I was mentally unstable for being upset about it. Jesus Christ. So I got a message from a kid who goes to my old high school asking me where the boiler room is, which I, I feel like the instructions were pretty clear in an old video that I made. So Godspeed my dudes and also I don't want to incriminate myself too much. I'm not sure I'm comfortable directly giving kids advice on how to break their school rules and probably get in a lot of trouble. Not Catholic school, but I was homeschooled, that's worse. And took some classes once a week at this Christian co-op. Once I wore a pink shirt that was slightly sheer and a white tank top underneath it. All's well and good, but I was also wearing a black bra and you could see the black bra strap. I was dress coded for it and they made me wear a shirt that said I like this shirt, it hides the dirt. A shirt that said, I like this shirt, it hides the dirt. I had an experience in, I believe this was seventh grade. I'm trying to, okay, so I was, it was like a dress down day. So we, were, we weren't in our uniforms that day. And I was wearing a tank top. They had told us that wearing a tank top with like a three finger width strap was fine. As long as it wasn't spaghetti straps, it wasn't too scandalous. But so I was wearing a tank top with like thick, straps. Mind you, I'm like a 12 year old kid. Like regardless of what I was wearing, it shouldn't have been sexualized. But apparently you could see my bra, like the strap of my bra as well. And my teacher called me out in front of the entire class and was just like, I can see your bra. That is scandalous. Go put your gym shirt on and hide the, the scandalous bra. And meanwhile, I'm like a literal child in a room full of literal children and this adult is like too scandalous, too sexual. 
And I was just like, I felt so uncomfortable. Obviously it didn't dawn on me that like, I was a child and regardless, <laughs> that part of it did not dawn on me at the time. I was more just like mortified over being called out in front of my entire class for a bra strap showing. Religious people and bra straps is very much a thing. Then there was the time I discovered my school had an elderly woman living inside of it that no one knew about. Oh my God. I was walking to my car when my mom came to pick me up and I saw into the window of what I thought was the teacher's lounge and f the face of an old woman with white hair and glasses. I double taked and then she was gone. Blinds closed, I wrote it off as just me seeing things. Find out a week later, nope, she was real. Apparently all the nuns knew about this and my principal sister Linda took her in because she had no family to take care of her. So actually kind of sad, but straight up an old woman that they hid within plain sight in an elementary school. I mean, it's kind, it's kind of wholesome that the nuns just took in this old woman who didn't have anywhere to go. Like that's, that's not like, sexualizing 12 year olds, very different types of weird. You know what I'm saying? Um, also the nuns at my school lived in the convent up the hill. That was exactly how my school was. Well, it wasn't up a hill. It was just like down a path, but there was a convent behind our school as well. So the best part of school were Fridays as a fifth to sixth grader, because if the sisters thought you'd been good enough that week, you'd get a ride up the hill with them in this big ass van full of groceries and help them unload and put it away in their kitchen. They were like whole packs of 10 year olds ferociously unloading this van, racing to the kitchen. IDK, but this made child labor fun as hell. I'm, okay. But like, it's, that's kind of wholesome as well though, right? Once in my Christian school, a teacher threw a box at a kid and then proceeded to preach about respect. God, I have so many of these stories. Context, I go to a Catholic state run secondary school in Scotland. Oh, damn. It's a pretty progressive country in general and that definitely bleeds through into the school, but there are some hardcore religious teachers who come out with some awful one-liners and teaching points on the regular, including but not limited to a French, oh, where is it? Did I lose it? Including but not limited to a French teacher telling her class that they could lie to her about doing their homework, but they couldn't lie to God because he would see into their corrupt souls. Also, we have RE, I'm assuming religious education, religious education teachers who told us that the love of two men can never be considered equal to a man and a woman for raising a family. This same religious education teacher is extremely misogynistic. It also goes without saying that there is no form of education regarding LGBT issues or sex ed. Yeah, basically all of the sex ed that we got at our school was, it was basically just you will get pregnant and die. These are all of the STDs you can get. Here's a video of a woman giving birth just to terrify you. In my Catholic school, they had to put up a sign in the girls' bathroom that says one person per stall, please, because they always caught girls hooking up in there. There was this one glorious time during test week. Nothing exciting ever happened during this, so my friend decided to spice things up. He went to the library and tried to summon a demon into the school. I'm not sure if it went well because I only saw it on the security cameras for questioning of the situation. Either way, he was suspended for three weeks. Damn, that's hardcore. When we were eight, we had to take in-school lessons at the local church to prepare us for our first Holy Communion and the Muslim kids had to participate, although they weren't doing their communion. Looking back, I realized how fucked that was. I actually never did any of like the first communion confirmation stuff as well, because my parents aren't religious, it was just my school. So in eighth grade, I believe that's the year that you do your confirmation. Yeah, like a big part of our religion class curriculum was like preparing for your confirmation and a couple of us were just not doing it. And it was like, okay, how do we pass this class? The teacher was thankfully understanding, but it was just awkward. And I remember like asking my mom if I could do it. And like, I wanted to, it's so fucked that like, just because of like my school environment and like, just cause everyone was doing it. I was like, yeah, I gotta go like get my first communion so I can like fit in at school. Like, I remember feeling like that in like grade seven and eight. Cause I, whenever we would have, have church, I wouldn't like take the communion wafer either. Um, and I was just like, I'm the weird kid cause I'm not like religious. It was just like the dumb, dumbest thing ever. Like kids want to feel normal, whatever. Okay, so in Catholic school, one of the sisters literally beat a girl with the back of her Bible because she thought she was talking about sex when she was really just telling my friend about her saxophone recital that was coming up. I walked in one day and everyone was staring at me and I said, well, okay then. And then the school mean girl walked up to me and was like, you're gay and held up a freaking picture of me and my girlfriend kissing on the bus. I don't even know how she did it, but she managed to show most of the people in our grade and all of the people she didn't tell heard from the people she did tell. Is that true? That's wild. I'm giving all of these stories the benefit of the doubt, but that's like some wild shit. She just holds up a printed picture or maybe she like had it on her phone and held, did she say it was a 
printed picture? What was said? If she like held up the picture on her phone, that would be less weird. Like she just took a secret creepy picture. But if she had a printed out like physical, a girl changed her tampon in the middle of a test because she got mad that our nun teacher wouldn't let her go to the bathroom. <laughs> my parents sent me to an all girls Catholic school because they didn't want me to get a boyfriend. Two years later, I brought my girlfriend home. Oops. Oops! When I was in eighth grade, I had to go to the high school across the street for math classes. As I was walking in, there was this mannequin wearing a felt blanket with a hole cut out for the head and a sign taped onto it reading, Modesty Poncho. Basically, if the school thought your prom dress was too revealing, they'd make you wear that over your dress. I look like a goblin. I gotta sit up like a respectable YouTuber. I had this one teacher for seventh grade who was kind of crazy. We did a history lesson about ancient Japan and she had a full real life katana in her closet in the classroom along with a kimono and everything. Mind you, she's very white. She was also like oddly obsessed with Genghis Khan. She once said that if she could have dinner with any dead person, it would be with him, Confucius, and Jesus Christ himself. She was also the strictest teacher about our school uniform, especially on mass days, which was every Wednesday. Plain white collared shirt, plaid skirt, black dress shoes, and socks that covered up your ankles. And people hated the socks rule, so she kept like old smelly socks in her closet along with the katana and would make people wear them if their socks weren't long enough. For our uniform, we had knee socks, but a lot of the time they would like kind of fall down or people would roll them down on really hot days and we'd always get yelled at to pull our socks up. Not because our calves were particularly scandalous, which is the implication here but just because it wasn't proper uniform if your socks were rolled down. It got so bad once that the principal literally came into our classrooms and would check and measure the length of our socks to make sure they were appropriate. They also hyper-focused on the girls because of sexism. Oh, it was a co-ed school. See, my school was just girls and yet they still pulled all kinds of sexist bullshit. This isn't really a story because I have tried to cancel out all of the stories from my Catholic elementary school, but I remember us being told that we all had donuts for hearts because Jesus wasn't there. They told us we had to be worthy and actually want Jesus in our heart or we would forever have a hole. I remember being so distraught about there being a hole in my heart as a child that I literally begged Jesus to fill the hole. Years later, I'm perfectly content with having no Jesus in my life. The hole in my heart has been filled with beautiful memes. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. There's a kid who was always kind of an ass to me, comes up to me while I was playing basketball with my friend and shoves my friend to the ground and starts coming for me. So all these years built up anger came out and I shoved him back. We got into a whole ass fight until the upperclassman starts yelling, you guys are disappointing Jesus, stop. Would Jesus hurt his friends? A teacher that noticed what's happening and comes over to stop us. We then don't get an actual punishment for fighting or disrupting our classmates. We just get a talking to about how disappointed Jesus is in us and that we need to pray really hard for his forgiveness. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So at my high school, you had to take a religion class every year. Now the classes would vary on how bearable they were, depending on which teacher you had. Big same at my school. Um, senior year, I had one of the bad teachers. He wasn't mean or anything like that. He just said the absolute weirdest shit. For example, when asked about why it's so bad if gay people got married, he responded, you shouldn't play baseball with a golf club. Saying you need the right equipment for marriage. <laughs> so weird stuff like that. One thing he said that was especially odd was on the topic of contraception. So obviously it's whack that the Catholic Church is against contraception, especially condoms. So he was explaining to our class how condoms take away the intimacy of sex. He explained to a girl sitting in front, if, it, if I was meeting your dad and went to shake his hand with a rubber glove on, wouldn't that be weird and take away from the handshake? Super uncomfortable. Anyway, Catholic school is whack, but the stories are at least entertaining. Hyped to hear more wacky stories from the fellow gays. Have a good day. I'm a big fan of your videos. Thank you very much for that message. It was fantastic. We played Charlie, Charlie, Are You There? And the kids who actually believed in God screamed and freaked out. And they held an assembly telling us the dangers of meddling with demonic forces. Hint, it was just my friend blowing on a pencil to freak people out. People got tired of the school being badly run, so they left really long Google reviews complaining about how the place was in the grip of the devil. Oh boy. <laughs> Google reviews? Is that the most effective way to, to you know, they, did, they didn't complain to the school administration, they left a Google review. All right then. So the complaining about how the place was in the grips of the devil and the director was consumed by greed and they called an assembly claiming that they were being cyber attacked and that the devil was using these people as a vessel of destruction to hinder the world word of God. 
The students were all pissing themselves laughing, of course. One time for this thing called adoration. Jesus Christ. Adoration. I am triggered. This thing called adoration where the priest holds up the gold shiny thing with the bread Jesus thing. Yeah, the sun looking thing with the Jesus bread in it. I know the thing. The entire school had to kneel on the gym floor for about an hour just staring at it silently. Everyone had so much knee pain after. Also in seventh grade, we had to sign this paper saying we thought abortion was bad. Our school briefly, I don't know if it was like a specific religion class that I was in or if it was the outreach club that like the person running it wanted to like make us go on a school field trip to the March for Life to participate in that. And a bunch of us were like, yeah, fuck no. Our adoration things were also just very weird. I, I'm sure I mentioned in a previous video, the video I made with my friend Lola, the crazy nun who took over our school for a year used to make us like she would hold the like the sun thing up and chant thank you jesus over and over again just super culty just thank you jesus holding this up and would just march around the school and make the entire school there was like 200 kids in the entire school but we would all have to like process through the halls just chanting thank you jesus following this crazy nun holding up the thing she also made us do some adoration periods where we just sat there listening to like Christian pop music It was like the most painful hour of my life One teacher got a hold of the history textbooks and literally ripped out the pages on evolution slash the origin of man And then my teacher got mad and told us all anyway and did a class project on the Disney movie dinosaur in which we made prehistoric landscapes out of clay So at least you got one sane teacher. That was kind of my school, the science teacher taught us evolution, very much believed in evolution, although she, it came, teaching evolution came with a disclaimer. She was like, I'm sorry, like if, if, if this is against any of your beliefs, but like this is the approved curriculum and I'm gonna teach evolution and I'm sorry if I offend anyone, as if any of the students were really that insanely religious. They weren't, like none, very few students were, were super religious. And the ones that were, like people, kind of side-eyed them a little bit, or at least my friend group definitely side-eyed them. We were at school confession once in the church and my grade was talking loudly. The teachers kept telling us to stop, but nobody listened, of course. After about five minutes, an extremely annoyed priest walks up to the altar and screams, no talking, it's Jesus time right now, into the microphone and I was the only one who laughed hysterically. <laughs> We were genuinely taught that men have one less rib than women because God took Adam's rib to make Eve. This was presented as a total medical fact. Wasn't until recently I found out it wasn't true. <laughs> Not particularly funny, but we were forced to measure each other's skirts and then report anyone who went above basically being in a nunnery. Oh, we also had a teacher get fired for attending a pro-choice rally after the Alabama abortion ban. We also had the skirt measuring thing. I believe three inches above the knee was the permitted leg skin amount <laughs> that you were allowed to show. Um, even though most people rolled their kilt up. Now, if you're super uncool and weren't traumatized by Catholic school, let me explain to you a thing about kilts. Girls roll them up. Like you, the waistband of the skirt, you can roll so that the shirt, the skirt goes shorter. English words. So a lot of girls who wanted to make their uniform look a little bit more stylish um, would roll the kilts so that their skirts would be shorter. Even, I think I used to roll mine up, but only once. I would do one roll, so it was still classy. I didn't get called out for it too much by the teachers. Thank you to everyone who sent me their Catholic school tales. Even if I did not get to them, I appreciate them all. Um, I feel a deep solidarity with everyone who had to suffer through Catholic school as well. I will see you in another video. A very special video. Next week, my friends.